okay good evening so this is our lecture number 37 and uh, <clears throat> in the previous lecture we have talked about the interface advection techniques and today also we will continue the discussion and uh, little bit in more detail we will talk about volume of fluid method so basically whenever we do talk about the interface advection techniques there are large number of methods available out of these methods we will be finding here that uh, volume of fluid method is one of the oldest and is uh, uh, more widely used because of its uh, many reasons so <clears throat> That's why we will uh, discuss the volume of fluid method in detail. So this was our uh, last discussion when we have actually seen that if we consider a one dimensional slug which is moving in a pipe, <clears throat> then if we consider uh, our piecewise constant scheme that was leading to large diffusion with the propagation of the slug and whenever we considered the piecewise linear scheme corresponding to that though we were able to slightly decrease the diffusion but in that case uh, the oscillations were significant okay so now we will talk about the third type of interface advection scheme which is called as volume of fluid method okay so in case of volume of fluid method uh, if you see this is nothing but shaded portion is color function equal to one so if you see uh, what I have done when I have specified the <coughs> color function in my uh, cell which is containing the interface. So I, I have considered over here that my GF cell is actually containing the interface. So earlier if you recall uh, as per the description earlier description we have specified color function something like this. So this was the shaded portion. Okay. So in case of volume of fluid method what additional change we are doing when we are actually presenting the color function we are determining the direction of normal to the interface okay and in the direction normal to the interface we are presenting the interface parallel to that particular direction is this point clear so we are presenting it with the straight line only but this straight line is having direction normal uh, in a plane normal to the interface direction okay so because <clears throat> say this is my interface and here i have fluid one here i have fluid two now we know that when we define the normal at the interface we take its outward direction from fluid one to fluid two so here normal vector will be like this so when i will be representing the color function c now in this particular jth cell i have two possibilities to represent the color function either i can represent color function like this using a line like this okay horizontal line or i can present my color function using a vertical line so when I will be using the volume of fluid method, whatever my initial interface location is given, first what I will do, I will calculate the outward normal from the interfacial location. Once I have determined the outward normal, remember that direction of normal I will be considering from reference fluid that is phase 1 to phase 2. Okay. And once I have determined that direction of unit normal, then perpendicular to that direction whatever line is coming whether it is horizontal or vertical that particular line I will be specifying in such a way so that it is covering the shaded portion equal to that of the corresponding value of the C in that particular cell. Is this point clear? So once I have decided <coughs> that normal to interface so this is my interface location so normal to interface my direction will be representing a line nothing but a vertical line okay so that's why whenever i have presented the shaded portion over here i have taken the fraction of the cell which is identical to that of the c value but it represented with a line which is in direction normal to the interface is this point clear in a plane which shows the direction normal to the interface okay so this is how i have located the interface now what is the advantage the advantage is huge now you can see that 
this interface is moving in rightward direction with u naught velocity okay so <clears throat> what i can do i can consider that if u naught is the velocity at this interface and delta t is time step how much distance interface will be moving u naught into delta t this is the distance which interface will be moving from this location to next location okay and what is the distance needed for interface to travel from this location to cell boundary the distance which interface should require to travel from its present location to the cell boundary is how much this is delta x this distance will be cj into delta x okay and this distance will be how much 1 minus cj into delta x okay so if my u not delta t is less than 1 minus cj into delta x what is the meaning meaning is very simple up to that time there will be no flux of the reference fluid at the right word place is this point clear so for this much time interval the flux of the reference phase at the right phase of the uh, control volume will be equal to zero okay once u not delta t is greater than 1 minus cj into delta x what will be flux what will be flux now now flux will be of course equal to cj what fraction is coming okay so <clears throat> considering this when i will be calculating the flux at the rightward phase all are clear with this point what i am saying okay so now what we will be doing when i will be calculating the flux f at point j plus 1 by 2 so when i will be calculating the flux at j plus 1 by 2 and integrating it with time from t to t plus delta t then this flux has to be equal to 0 when my delta t is less than equal to 1 minus cj into delta x by u naught is this point clear and once delta t is greater than 1 minus cj into delta x by u naught corresponding to that your flux will be cj minus 1 into delta x plus u naught into delta t. All are clear with this point. cj minus 1 into delta x will ensure the value equal to 0 up to the time when cj, when interface is reaching to the boundary and after that time actually it should uh, propagate with the interface velocity. All are clear with this point? Is this point clear? So, now when I will be doing the time integration, my left face which is f equal to, sorry, which is f at j minus 1 by 2, left face will always be having flux equal to that of cj, okay, because that is something which is coming from the previous cell. But right flux, uh, right face will be having flux governed by this particular equation. Is this point here? Once I do substitution of this equation and then if I calculate, I will be able to calculate my interface with what accuracy? What type of accuracy I will be getting in this case? Means I will be having any oscillations, I will be having any diffusion. Please tell me, <clears throat> if I use this method, then will I be having any diffusion? What is the meaning of diffusion? Diffusion is if partial value of Cj is getting distributed in the neighboring cells. But in this case, partial value is getting distributed? No. So it means in this particular case, we will not be having any diffusion. Okay. At the same point of time, we are not considering any slope 
kind of approach that say my partial area is entering always we are considering the approach where my interface direction is in interface normal is parallel to the interface velocity so that's why here interface will always be moving in the same straight line so for one dimensional flow this approach will be giving me nothing but the zero error and 100% accurate estimation of interface is this point clear So for one dimensional flow, this approach will be giving you nothing but 100% accurate prediction of the advection of the interface location. Okay. So it means that volume of fluid method works perfectly fine for one dimensional flow. The only thing we have done is using the value of C, if we have to represent the location of the interface then location of interface we have decided in the direction whose plane is perpendicular to direction of the outward normal from the interface. So that is something which we have ensured and using this approach actually we are able to satisfy 100% uh, our motion of the or advection of the interface with the velocity. Okay. So what you can do, this is the generalized formula. This generalized formula you can apply for the previous problem using the number of grid details whatever I have specified and then you can test that it will be giving you 100% accuracy as that of the theoretical prediction. Okay. <clears throat> now, how this scheme is extended actually for multi-dimension problem. Okay. For single dimension it is perfectly fine because for one dimensional what will be happening? Interface will be always either parallel to horizontal or parallel to vertical but whenever you go for two dimensional flow condition then your interface can be at any arbitrary orientation okay so there is the difficulty because there we will be finding some error yes so here you can see this figure a is nothing but the actual interface location so say let's consider that this is how at any point of time my phases are distributed okay so if this is how my phases are distributed so this is my fluid one and outside is fluid two now let me consider that i will use this horizontal line approach only for defining the interface but because this is a two dimensional approach now i don't have the flow direction known in a specific direction because flow can be parallel to horizontal, it can be parallel to vertical or it can be at any certain angle. Okay, so flow direction can be arbitrary. Once the interface flow direction can be arbitrary, it will not be always useful to specify interface with either a horizontal line or a vertical line. Okay. So better approach for a two dimensional system can be that define interface in terms of two, define interface in terms of two lines present in each cell. Okay. So one line will be horizontal, other line will be vertical. For example, here you can see, so this is the interface, actual interface location. So if this is actual interface location, it means actually my value of C in this cell will be close to 0.85 or so. Okay. Now I can place a horizontal line which is covering below almost 85% of the cell volume. Similarly, I can also place a vertical line which is covering almost 85% of the cell volume. Okay. So now the piecewise connection of these horizontal and vertical lines in the different in the different cells is actually representation or construction of the interface okay so now in this approach here you can see your actual interface curve is something like this but you are not able to mimic your actual interface control but your interface will be represented by some step lines Okay, is this one clear? So in this case, 
what will be happening your order of accuracy of interface prediction will be of the order of cell size considering that delta y equal to h and delta x is equal to h so say i have a square cell present so if i have a square cell present then i know that the interface which is having this uh, which is having this uh, uh, non real uh, non integral value of the volume fraction okay because the cells which are filled with fluid 2 these are having zero the cells which are filled with fluid 1 these are having 1 and are in between 1 and 0 along the interface you will be finding only your one cell is present okay so your order of interface prediction is equal to that of order of h okay but you are not accurately able to predict the curvature of the interface rather you are specifying some combination of horizontal and vertical lines which somehow gives some approximate idea of the interface location okay so in this case what will be happening more finer is the grid then these step sizes will be becoming that small so whatever uh, if you decrease the grid size at the interface then you will be able to mimic your boundary re, uh, this reconstructed boundary of interface close to that of your actual interface profile okay but you cannot achieve 100 percent accuracy to define your actual interface profile is this one clear so this type of approach is called as simple line interface calculation Okay, so this is called as simple line interface calculation. Then the next method has come which is nothing but variant of this part B but in this method now in each cell instead of specifying instead of specifying two lines only one line is specified and how it is decided that what should be the orientation of that particular line. Okay. So in this case first what is done with reference to the original interface shape normal to interface is calculated in each and every cell. Once you calculated the normal to the interface using the information of volume fractions in neighboring cells then you will be locating your line horizontal or vertical in orientation which is closest to the normal to the interface. Is this point clear? So here if you see for example, this normal will be somewhere like this. So this normal will be making lesser angle with the vertical direction. So that's why in this cell you have decided that okay let me place it as a <coughs> vertical line. The cell here you will be finding normal is something close to like this. So it will be making less angle with the horizontal. So let's place the line in horizontal orientation. Okay. So this is another method which is called as Hart and Nicholas VOF. Okay. So to the simple volume of fluid method, this was the correction which was introduced by Hart and Nicholas. So that's why this is called as Hart and Nicholas volume of fluid method. Okay. Rather than now specifying the two lines, you are only specifying a single line. And this single line is by utilizing the information of slopes in the neighboring cells. How that slope is calculated for neighboring cells that I will discuss in the subsequent discussion for a two dimensional system how it is calculated okay that I will describe in the later slides. But one issue was that this Hart and Nicholas volume of fluid method was leading to some artificial interface breakups and coalescence okay. So when your interface is represented like this it is significantly different from the actual interface profile and it is specified by some stepped structures okay so these stepped structures what these will be introducing these will be introducing some partial breakups or 
coalescence of the interfaces. So that's why you may find that say, if your interface in, in real scenario is something like this, say uh, it is some jet which is extended from uh, something. So here what you will be finding, say this will be breaking up into multiple random irregular shapes. So you will be having actually unphysical breakups and coalescence of the interfaces. Okay. Then one next uh, improvement was suggested which was plick. This is called as <coughs> piecewise linear interface calculation. So in piecewise linear interface calculation now what is done because so basically though this method has not been that much useful but this has given some idea to the researchers to develop the click method. How? Because in this method what we were doing already we were calculating the slopes in the present cells and the neighboring cells. Okay. So now using that information of the normal to the interface you can decide that rather than specifying a horizontal line or a vertical line now you will be representing the interface with some <coughs> line inclined line segments which are parallel to the direction of the sorry which are parallel to the direction of the plane which is perpendicular to normal to the interface okay so normal to the interface at this cell will be like this this is the interface normal. Now, to this interface normal, the parallel plane is this one. So, in this plane, whatever line I will be drawing such that from this line my interface is always normal, that particular line is called as piecewise linear line. Okay. And why piecewise linear we are calling? Because I am not drawing simultaneously line uh, sorry I am not drawing drawing the connected lines between the multiple cells you can see that this particular line in this cell and this particular line in this cell these are not joining each other so these are nothing but here also disconnected here also disconnected so at many places these lines are disconnected and not connecting the interfaces from all the sides okay but one advantage of this approach is that here you have least error in terms of the actual interface prediction. Is this point clear? And moreover, if you decrease the, if you further decrease the size, then your line will be becoming, uh, then your interface, if you further decrease the cell size, then your interface prediction will be actually more accurate. Okay. So, this is one advantage of using the piecewise linear interface calculation. So, this is the overview of the evolution of volume of tool method. Now, in each of these methods, how we can determine normal vector, equation of this line and location of this line that I will discuss in the subsequent slides before introducing all the methods of interface advection. So, first our interest is to introduce all the methods of interface advection. Once we introduced all the methods, then we will try to uh, know the method in details which is having advantage over other methods. Okay. Now let us talk about other method that is called as front tracking method. So all the methods which I have described till this point, these comes under the category of whatever the method I discussed in this slide. These are the methods which comes under the category of front capturing methods. Okay. So methods of interface evolution can be divided into two categories. One is front capturing methods. Second is front tracking methods. So in case of front capturing methods, what we are doing? We are doing the evolution of the color function or the height function. Okay, we are not doing actually the evolution of the interface and then using that information of the advection of color function, we are reconstructing the interface profile. Okay, but in case of front tracking methods, 
what we do at the interface we place large number of pointers okay so all these pointers are nothing but some particles which are called as surface markers these points are nothing but called as the surface markers okay now at each and every surface marker i will be calculating the normal velocity of this surface marker in the direction normal to the interface okay and once i will be calculating the normal velocity then what will be happening this surface markers position can be actually translated over the time or advected over the time and in their new locations then you can utilize these new locations of the pointers to fit some curve through the surface markers to determine the new location of the interface okay so these are called as front tracking methods front tracking methods which are utilizing only the surface markers can give some error so when it can give some error if say your velocity field is oriented in such a way so that your interface is stretching then what will be happening the density of the surface markers will decrease so on density of the surface markers is decreasing your accuracy of the interface prediction will decrease okay then there can be large number of scenarios where say interface profile is becoming too much complex in this scenario what will be happening your surface marker will be confused whether to join the points between these two points or these two lines so whenever you have multiple complex interfaces and breaking and making of interfaces then also actually the use of this front tracking methods gives some errors okay so that's why when you are using the front tracking methods then majority of time for, for front tracking you have to also limit sometimes your time step so that time step is very very small so that the marker location is displacing very less okay then particularly the problems which are coming due to the uh, occurrence of surface markers in the zone of stretching of the interface these can be resolved if we use volume markers in place of surface markers so in when we will be using the volume markers of course volume markers are not used in all the phases what we can do we can use volume markers in one of the phase so in one of the phase if we place particles then these will be actually acting as volume markers but when we are using the volume markers then the challenge is that you cannot determine that which marker from the center is actually coming to boundary and becoming the interface okay so when you are using volume marker then particularly near the interface you have to use some triangulation procedure first to create some grid around the interface in each step and with the help of that grid actually you can identify the actual location of the interface okay and if your interface deformation is significant in certain phenomenon then that grid almost in every uh, time step you have to actually recreate okay so that type of uh, thing again create limitation in terms of front tracking method so that's why of course for certain applications where deformations are less there people are using these uh, front tracking methods also for interface reconstruction but in general for wide range of problems actually still uh, there are certain limitations and people are still working in developing the more advanced front tracking methods for defining the interfaces okay then uh, another method for interface advection can be level set method uh, of course uh, level set method the brief detail i have already given to you okay in my previous lectures just for the sake of completeness i thought to include it over here uh, i will not discuss this in detail because our major interest in this course we will try to devote on the volume of fluid method only okay so just one simple thing i want to say that 
uh, in case of level set function you already know that if say this is the contour at the interface then level set function at the interface is equal to 0 and towards uh, one fluid it is less than 0 and on the other side it is greater than 0 ok. But this level set method will not just suffice your uh, level set function will not suffice your purpose because you also have to define the properties smooth transition of properties from one phase to another phase. So that is why you also need to define some indicator function using the when you will be doing the actual implementation of this method you also need to define some indicator function ok. While you are defining the indicator function you have to consider that if f is less than alpha delta x then alpha is some uh, arbitrary constant which is considered uh, near the interface near the uh, occurrence of the interface. So when it is value of f is less than minus alpha dx then we consider our indicator function to be 0 when it is greater than alpha dx then we consider our indica indicator function to be 1 and when it is mod of f is less than alpha delta x corresponding to that this is the equation which will be giving you the variation of the indicator function. So what you will be finding say this is your interface location and here you have phase 1 and here you have phase 2. So your indicator function will be varying something like this near the interface ok and this value of alpha will be defining how much thick is this particular zone. So smoothening zone can be controlled by changing the value of alpha. For majority of simulations in level set function alpha is typically kept 3. If you keep alpha equal to 3 your interface will be indicator function will be spreaded over 6 cells around the interface. 3 from this side, 3 from this side. Is this point clear? So typically when level set function is, uh, level set method is implemented in practical conditions the value of this arbitrary co constant is kept close to 3 uh, which will be uh, distributing the indicator function over the 6 cells. It means near the interface from 3 cells in one side and 3 cells in the other side itself properties variation will start moving in a continuous phase. So transition of the properties will be starting in the chain. Okay, is this one clear? And of course, if there is the requirement of the problem, then you can actually change the value of alpha to spread the indicator function over multiple cells. Okay. Then comes the next series of methods which are called as phase field methods. Okay. So in case of phase fields method, interface is kept relatively sharp by doing modifications in the governing equations ok. So typically in your governing equations first we will be assuming that interface is of finite thickness rather than having a sharp discontinuity at the interface we will be assuming that the thickness of the interface is finite ok. But this finite thickness of the interface is containing thermodynamic laws which are consistent with the sharp interface formulation. Of course, because our physical nature of the problem is sharp interface for emissible fluids. Okay. So, though for taking some advantage of the computational method, we want to use a interface of finite size, but whenever we will be implementing the governing laws, these should take care of the fact that our actual interface in the physical sense is nothing but so, thermodynamic laws should be consistent with the conservation as that of the actual interface location. Okay. So, in case of phase field approach, if you see the application, so this approach is mostly useful for simulations of solidification and melting time. Okay. Uh, and in fluid dynamic simulation, it, this approach is actually very limited. Uh, now, what is done? So, here you can see this is my 
small c over here is called as phase field function okay so earlier if you so this function is nothing but identical to that of your color function so earlier when you do the advection of color function at the interface then you consider that dc by dt equal to 0 so it means at interface there is no diffusion and color function is only advecting with the interface but in the phase field method we assume because finite thickness interface so that's why we have some diffusive component also at the interface okay and the diffusive component is decided by gradient of free energy function so phi is nothing but free energy function and value of this free energy function is depend dependent upon other multiple functions which are ultimately can be determined by the phase field function so of course we will not be discussing this method in detail but the whole idea of describing this method is that in this particular method interface is considered of finite thickness and then we introduce some constraint on the interface which will be actually in our governing laws which will be diminishing that diffusion of the interface in order to make it sharp okay then third method is CIP method. So it is having multiple names cubic interpolated pseudo particle method, cubic interpolated propagation method or the latest name is constraint interface profile method. So in this method instead of using a single function two functions are used. One is function f. Function f is identical to color function okay and second function is g which is nothing but derivative of f okay del f by del x so two functions are there one is color function and second is derivative of the color function so here you can see we will be studying the advection of both the functions first we will be studying the advection of color function del f by del t plus u times del f by del x equal to 0. Secondly, we will be studying the advection of the derivative of the color function. Okay. And then we will be using some function, some cubic function. We will be using some cubic polynomial function p of x which is equal to ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d and we will determine the coefficients a, b, c and d of this cubic function in such a way so that this single cubic function can give you the values of both f and g in your cell j minus 1 and gf cell. Is this one clear? So single cubic function should be able to determine the value of f and g in both the cells j minus 1 and g. So considering that location x j minus 1 is equal to 0, your location x j will be nothing but equal to delta x because x j is the next cell. Okay. For, so for a one dimensional system, if you apply this constraint and calculate the values of coefficient, so a, b, c and d, you will be getting their values. Okay. Once you calculated these values, then what you can do? you can write that propagation of the interface is zeta which is equal to u times delta t and solution of these two equations will be nothing but given by these coefficients in the form of in the form of this cubic function what you have taken in the table. All are clear with this point? So this is another method for determining the value of f and g. So once you are able to predict the new values of f and g at time level n plus 1, then what will be happening? You know the new value of color function in the next cell. Once you know the new values of color function, then you can actually determine new location of the interface. Okay. One important point is whenever you have to start this, start marching this solution, 
at nth time also you have to calculate the value of g. So how you will be calculating the value of g at nth time? If g is del f by del x and if you know the values of f in all the cells, can you use finite difference approach to calculate value of g in all the cells? Okay. So for first time what is done, when color function value is given for the initial interface location, then corresponding to that first you have to apply finite difference approach to calculate all the values of g in the entire computational cell. Okay. And once you have determined all the values of g in entire computational cell, then you can predict the values in next iterations. Is this point clear? So all these methods, whatever I am actually telling you, uh, these are the ideas and of course if you try writing your small small code for one dimensional problem then you can see the applicability of these methods. So many of you might be parallelly doing HPC where you have to write some code. So while you are preparing codes there, there you can take the all these as nothing but your examples. Okay. So this is you can see the how accurate is actually CIP method. So with CIP method, this red colored line, so small oversuit and undersuit is there. However, majority of the interface is actually preserved. Okay. Now comes the more complicated part. So after this, our entire discussion will be only on volume of fluid method. Okay. So till this point, I explained you the family of methods which can be utilized for advection of the interface or advection of the color function. Okay. After using these methods, after studying all these methods, one thing we can conclude that volume of fluid method for one dimensional problem has served our actually purpose fully. Okay. We were able to achieve 100% accuracy and there was no diffusion. Okay. And uh, moreover, if you go through the computational literature of multiphase flow, you will be finding that volume of fluid method is one of the oldest methods and in present days also many variants of volume of fluid formulation are evolving to further improve it. Okay. So still it is in most use and it is one of the widest used method for multiphase flow problems. Okay. Particularly for DNS of multiphase flows, it is the widest used method. So majority of the computational codes, whether open source or commercial, you will be finding these are having uh, volume of fluid method actually implemented. Many people are using level set method also, but level set method is having some issue of conservativeness, like there is loss of the color function or loss of the uh, volume of the reference phase when level set method is used but the volume of fluid method is having inherent conservative nature so how that inherent conservative nature is there that i will discuss in the subsequent slides so that's why uh, when we will be talking about the two dimensional interfaces for two dimensional interfaces i will be uh, giving you the details of only volume of fluid method okay so here you can see a two dimensional grid structure. You have to remember one point now from now onwards. Whenever I will be using two dimensional grid structure, I will not be using the single set of index. Now I will be using two set of indices. So here you can see this i, i plus 1 and i minus 1 is the indices in the say x direction and j, j minus 1 and j plus 1 are the indices in the y direction. So if I have to designate arbitrarily any cell, say this cell, then this will be nothing but i comma j. Okay. Now here you can see that this is some interface location and corresponding to this interface location here I have fluid 1 and here I have fluid 2. Okay. So depending upon this initial interface location this is my distribution of the color function. Okay. Now, in this two dimensional structure, if I used simple line interface calculation method, then 
this will be my representation of the interface. So this is nothing but my construction of the interface. But if I use <coughs> piecewise linear interface calculation, then this will be my interface. Up to this point all are clear. So what is the idea of the volume of fluid method? The idea, whole idea of volume of fluid method is actually divided into two steps. First step is whenever you define initial interface. So initially we know the value of color function. So once we know the value of color function, using the value of color function actually we can reconstruct the interface profile. Is this point clear? So the first step in volume of fluid method is reconstruction of the interface shape from the knowledge of volume fraction field in each computational cell and then whatever the interface we are building this is nothing but approximate shape of the interface this will not be actual shape of the interface. Okay. Then second step is whatever this reconstructed interface we have taken we have to now propagate this reconstructed interface with time. So that is advection of the reconstructed interface for a given velocity field. So when we are doing that we have to determine amounts of exchange of reference volumes across the boundary of neighboring cell. Once we determine that how much reference phase is moving across the boundaries of the neighboring cells in given time interval then we can determine new values of the volume fraction in all the cells and then corresponding to these new values once again I can come back to the first step and I can start reconstructing the interface. Okay, Is this point clear? So now in this particular uh, in this uh, lecture series say in few one or two more lectures what we will do we will only discuss these two steps. First we will talk about all the methods which can be employed, so all the mathematical approaches within the volume of fluid method which can be employed for reconstruction of the interface and second we will see all the set of mathematical formulations which can be employed for advection of the reconstructed interface. So if we know these two things then you can write a two dimensional computational code for propagation of the interface. Okay. So now whenever you do the plick reconstruction of course in certain situations you may get some complicated distribution of the color function where you will not be exactly find able to find that where is your surface normal distributed. So if you see this type of distribution then it is very easy to determine the direction of normal because in all the neighboring cells your normal is pointing in almost the same orientation. But if you have this type of confused distribution of color function then there will be certain challenge to determine the value of interface normal. Okay. Now let us talk about as I told you that volume of fluid method is nothing but a mass conservative method. Okay. It is inherently having the mass conservative nature. So if I write that my marker function derivative and its advection term equal to 0 then in terms of integration for a two dimensional cell. Okay. So my two dimensional cell will be something like this. In case of one dimensional cell what was happening? The interface was only advecting in one direction. When I have a two dimensional cell say this is my interface location and this is normal velocity. So when this interface will be propagating it will be having propagation of fluxes of the reference phase both in right side as well as in left top and down. Okay. So propagation of interface will be from all the phases. That is why what is done it is written that del C i j say this is my cell i comma j. So 
derivative of color function with time for cell ij will be equal to 1 by if I don't consider this h then for the first time this I can write as 1 by x square what what is x square 1 by x square over here is nothing but mentioning the volume of cell for a two dimensional cell if I consider that this side is also h this is also h and depth is unit so then h square will be becoming volume of the cell okay so this is volume of the cell and then I have line integral of u dot n h x t dl equal to what is the meaning of u dot n u dot n will be representing normal velocity at not interface normal velocity at each cell boundary normal velocity at each cell boundary h of x t will represent the value of the marker function at each interface boundary ok and then dl is this one clear dl means all the four edges of the interface uh, sorry uh, cell boundary is this one clear all are clear with this idea so what is say if this is my cell boundary and from the previous cell I can say that this is my reference phase if it is entering to into this cell then up to this you can see the value of h will be 1 and above then this value of h will be 0. So h value at interface boundary is actually changing at each and every location and moreover I am knowing the value of velocity so velocity is u dot n and then dl is integral over this entire boundary of the cell control volume ok. So this is the advection term this is the advection of the color function in a two dimensional cell. Now if I take this h on other side then this will be my equation is this point clear. Now when you will be taking the derivative of this term what will be derivative of this term h square into c i j at time n plus 1 minus c i j at n divided by delta ok and this entire integral flux this is integral for a generic cell type ok but if you consider you have a <coughs> two dimensional cell whose indices are i comma j then its faces can be given as this will be one face which will be i plus 1 by 2 comma j this will be other face i minus 1 by 2 comma j this will be another face i comma j plus 1 by 2 and this bottom face will be i comma j minus 1 by 2. So it means that if I divide this entire thing then it is having how many faces? 4 faces ok. So in all the 4 faces I need to actually calculate the value of flux. So I am writing that phi x at i plus 1 by 2 comma j at nth time. This is nothing but flux of color function in x direction at phase i plus 1 by 2. So through this particular phase what is the flux of the color function. Similarly phi n x i minus 1 by 2 j will be the flux of color function through the left side phase. So right boundary minus left boundary then similarly in y direction top boundary what is outgoing minus incoming ok. So this is how 
if these fluxes of color function are known to me, I can calculate the value of Cij at n plus 1. Is this one clear? Now, if I write this equation for all the values of i and j within my two-dimensional computational structure, then what will be happening? In between the two neighboring cells, whatever is the flux phi n which is going in x direction from i plus 1 by 2 comma j for cell i comma j that will be nothing but equal to minus for i minus 1 by 2 comma j for cell i minus 1 comma j. Is this one clear? Sorry, for i plus. Is this one clear? Like if you consider a common face, so what is going into this face is something which is subtracted from this the leftward face. Is this one clear? So if you have say two containers, if you two people adjacently sitting considering that say uh, you are holding a book that is nothing but a color function. So if one guy is handing over that book to the next guy, so one is through the common boundary, one side there is loss, other side there is gain. Okay. So for the neighboring cells, you will be finding that flux of color volume for <coughs> one cell will be positive, for other cell will be negative. All of us agrees to this point. Now, it means that if I write this equation of Cij at time n plus 1 for all the cells within my domain and for boundary cells if I use the appropriate boundary conditions then ultimately after writing all the set of equations if I take their sum what I will be finding? If I take their sum what I will be finding ultimately? Because fluxes are common, okay, positive for one, negative for other. So when I will be doing the sum of all these equations for, a sum of this equation for all the cells of my computational domain, I will be finding that all these fluxes will be cancelling with each other and right hand side will be purely equal to zero. So if right hand side is purely equal to zero, that will give me that summation of Cij at time n plus 1 is equal to summation of Cij at time n. So it means what was the value of color function for the complete domain at time level n, same is the value of color function for entire domain at time level n plus 1. Okay. So it means your color function, the mass which is nothing but indicating the volume or mass of the reference phase that is remaining conserved. So if that is remaining conserved, what is mass or volume of the uh, other phase? That is nothing but total volume of the domain minus volume of the reference phase. So that is also conserved. Okay. So this shows that volume of fluid method is nothing but a mass conservative approach. Okay. So now about reconstruction methods, I will discuss in the next lecture and in one more lecture I will discuss the advection methods only for two dimensional system and with that we will actually close this course though we will be left with one small thing that is implementation or discretization of surface tension term because that is something which we don't discuss in uh, discretization of the Navier Stokes equations but that I will uh, left it for you people only if you want you can read it from the book. Okay.